So in the last episode, you learned how to create a connection to a database using object oriented PHP. And in this episode, we're going to learn how to fetch data and how to insert data, just in general, how to interact with the database using object oriented PHP. Just going to go ahead and slide this out so you can actually see here. Um, so this is what we did in the last episode. We went ahead and created a class called DBH, which connects to our database. And using this connection, we're able to interact with the database and actually pull out data or insert data or do anything to interact with the database. Now, what we're going to be doing here is we're not really going to be focusing on the MVC model in this episode. We're going to do that in the next episode because I think it's better that you just kind of see how we interact with the database. And then afterwards, we can focus on actually doing it the MVC way. So for today, we're just going to go ahead and create one other class. So I'm going to go up inside my classes folder. I'm going to create a new file. And I'm just going to go ahead and call this one something like test. So we're going to go ahead and say test dot class dot PHP. Inside here, I'm going to go ahead and open up my PHP tags because we need to actually write PHP code. And I'm going to go ahead and create a class that I'm going to call test. Now, the important thing here is that we will be interacting with the database at some point inside this test class. So we do need to be able to access our connection that we created in the last episode. So inside where we created our class, we do need to extend to our DBH class. Otherwise, we can't access the connection uh, method we have inside that class in there. So with this, we're actually ready to go ahead and interact with the database. Now, the first thing I'm going to be showing you is how to pull out data from a database, not using prepared statements. And you might be thinking, well, why should I show you how to do without prepared statements? Well, if you don't actually have user input from a user inside a website, you don't technically need to use prepared statements since there's nothing that the user can submit to you that is going to be uncontrolled. So if I were to just go ahead and say, well, I'm, I'm going to just fetch something from the database and it's not something that needs to be based on a user input, we can just go ahead and do it without prepared statements. So I'm going to create a new public. Uh, method here. I'm just going to go ahead and call this one something like get user. Guys can call it get users. And inside this method here, I'm going to start out by creating a SQL statement that will actually go in and be the statement that we run inside the database in order to fetch something from our users table. Because do you remember that in the previous episode, I said that I had a database set up. Let me just go ahead and show you what exactly I have in here. So inside my database called OOP PHP 16, because that was the previous episode, I did not think the name through when I created it because it is episode 17 now. So this doesn't really make sense. But anyways, uh, inside the users table, you can see that I already have three users inside of here. And with this information, I'm going to go ahead and take these users and actually show them inside my website. So if I go back inside the website here, you can see that I cleaned it out, I refreshed it, we have nothing in here because we have nothing sort of information going on. So we're going to actually take our users and display them inside here. Uh, going inside my document again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside my method here. And I'm first going to create a SQL statement. Now, we can minimize the code a little bit here. But because I like to keep things organized, I like to create a separate SQL variable that just sort of contains the entire SQL information that I'm going to be then running inside the database. So this is just the, the preferred way that I like to do things. So inside this statement here, I'm going to say I want to select all from users select all from users. The next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and run this inside our database. And do keep in mind when we created our connection here inside our DB8 class, you can see that we set a optional parameter that said that okay, the fetch mode had to be as associative arrays when we fetch something from inside the database. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to create a new variable which is called STMT. I'm going to go ahead and set equal to. And now we need to point to our connection inside our DB8 class. Now, usually, if, if I just had the connection included inside this file here at the very top, I could just go ahead and say, well, variable PDO, because that's the one that we created here. That's the one that I need to reference to. But because it's inside a separate class, we need to do this a little bit differently. So instead, I'm going to say that because I'm extending to the class, I can say variable this, because I'm talking about this class and every class that I extend to. And then I'm going to point to a method called connect, which is what I called my method in there. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and point to a method that is built into object or into PHP or just built into PHP in general, which is something that is called query. Parentheses, semicolon. Now inside the query statement here, we need to include the actual SQL statement. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste it in here. And now the next thing we can do is we can simply go in and actually fetch the data. So if I go down to the next line, I'm going to create a while loop or while statement. And inside this while statement, I'm going to say I want to create a dollar sign row variable. And I'm going to go ahead and set it equal to the statement that we created up here. So statement, and then I'm going to point to a method called fetch. There we go. Now, usually, like I said before, if I did not have set a fetch mode to associative arrays, we would actually need to set that inside the fetch mode here. But because we set that default parameter inside our DBH class down here, we don't actually need to do anything in here, which is kind of nice because it saves us a lot of trouble when it comes to the fetch mode. Now, if I do at some point need to use a different fetch mode, you can just go ahead and go in there and just write another fetch mode inside uh, the actual method here. But for now, we're just gonna go ahead and use associative arrays. So what I can do now is I can simply go inside this while loop and I could echo out some information. So if I wanted to echo out uh, dollar sign row, say I want to reference to the table column called users underscore first name. Because remember, we're getting this as a associative array, which means that we're simply getting this um, as an array where we have named indexes, which means that uh, the first index inside my array, if I were to go inside my actual um, database here, you can see that we have users underscore ID, users underscore first name, users underscore last name, and so on. These are going to be the names of the different indexes that we get returned as an array. So if I want to refer to Daniel, then I refer to the column called users underscore first name. So if I go back inside my code, that is what I'm referring to here. I'm just gonna go ahead and add a break here just to have it. And there we go. So if I were to actually go inside my website now, wait, okay, actually, we need to do one more thing. I need to go inside my index page because right now we're not actually fetching anything inside our database. We're just simply setting up the classes. So inside the index page, I'm just gonna go ahead and open up a pair of PHP tags down here inside my body tag. And inside the PHP tag, we're gonna go ahead and create an actual object based off my test class. So I'm going to say I have a test object just to give it some kind of name. And it's going to be a new test parentheses, because this is the test class we're instantiating. And I'm going to refer to the method that we just created, which right now, if you go in here, is called get users. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the name here. And I'm gonna to refer to test users. Now, because I'm already echoing out the information inside the actual answer here, like this is going to be the output, um, this is going to be like, we just need to go ahead and just run it. But if I just return some data inside this test class here, if I returned this and not echoed it, then I would need to echo in front of here in order to actually get it out inside the browser. Just pointing it out because I have gotten questions about it in the past. Uh, so with this, we can actually go inside our browser and as you can see, we get all the names in here. So we're getting Daniel, Nicholas, and Dennis, which is what we're trying to do here. So this is without prepared statements, which you can argue is not very safe. But again, if we don't have an user input, then we don't actually need prepared statements. So going back inside our code, we're gonna just go ahead and copy paste this one time. Because why delete it when we can just keep it for notes for the future, right? So we're just gonna go ahead and copy paste. And then I'm gonna call this new one, get users, STMT, which stands for statements. So what I want to do in here is I want to change the SQL statement because this time we actually get a user input from somewhere. So I want to say that inside my statement, I want to get all from users where users underscore first name, underscore first name is equal to question mark because we're gonna fill this out later. This is just going to be a placeholder and users underscore last name is equal to question mark. Okay, so with this, I essentially left in some blanks and what is happening when we use prepared statements is that we're actually gonna go ahead and take this 
uh, statement here and we're just going to run it inside the database first and then later on we're going to insert the information because we do it in this order here it allows for us to prevent that users inject something into our database because it runs the SQL statement first without any input and then after we'll just fill in the blanks so that sort of avoids us uh, running the, the data that is submitted by the user together with the statement inside the database which makes it safer so with this we're going to go ahead and do this slightly different down here. So inside our statement variable, I'm going to still run the connection, but instead of running it, like running the actual statement first, instead we want to go ahead and say we don't want to query it, but instead we want to just prepare it. So we're preparing the actual SQL statement inside the database without the user input. So we're going to say prepare. And let's actually just go ahead and delete this down here because we don't actually need to see that. Uh, so after we prepare the actual statement, we run the SQL statement inside the database. The next thing we need to do is we need to fill in the blanks because right now we just left question marks as blanks and we're just gonna go ahead and fill those in. So I'm going to refer to the same statement that we have up here. And then I want to point to a method called execute, which we're going to use to actually execute the data that I want to submit into the database, at least in order to, to run this information inside the database. Now, execute does require a array. So I'm going to say we want to have brackets in here. And then I just want to fill in the information that was submitted to us by the user. But hold on, where is the information from the user? Well, we need to make sure that we actually send that in to this method here when we actually start using this method. So at the top here, I'm going to include a couple of different parameters. So we're going to say that we want to include a variable and we're gonna call this one first name. Then I want to include a variable last name. And again, this is information that we're going to include once we actually need to run this statement here inside our index page. So we're not gonna include the actual information just quite yet, but it will get included once we refer to this method here. So we can actually go and take this first name, paste it in as the first one. And do keep in mind, this is chronological, meaning that the first question mark up here will take the first parameter inside our array down here. Then the next parameter is going to be the second question mark and so on and so on and so on. So you can have as, as many question marks as you want to. You just need to make sure it's chronological inside the execute method. So once we've done this, we can actually go ahead and say that, okay, do we want to fetch just the first row or do we want to fetch all the rows inside the database here? Uh, because when we use prepared statements, we have to do it slightly different. Uh, so what I can do is I can go and say, well, okay, I'm gonna go and create a variable. I'm gonna call it names. And I'm gonna go and set it equal to our statement up there. So variable STMT. And I want to refer to a specific method. Now, previously we referred to fetch, but because we're doing this slightly different using prepared statements, fetch is just going to fetch one row inside the database, meaning that I can't get all the names spit out inside my website. So if I want to get one name, we of course just use fetch. And again, because we have the optional parameter set inside our database class right here as associative arrays, we don't need to fill that out inside the fetch method here. Now, if I do want to get more than just one row inside the results here, I can say fetch all instead, which will fetch all the different rows inside the, the result. Uh, so let's just go ahead and do that for now. So the next thing we can do is we can actually go ahead and take this information and we can actually spit it out inside our website using a for each statement. So I'm gonna say for each, parentheses, curly brackets. And inside the for each statement, I'm gonna go ahead and take this variable names and say as variable name. And I'm just gonna go ahead and you know, sort of write out whatever I want to output inside the website. So if I want to echo out the first name of the user, I can just simply go in and just like before, we can actually go ahead and copy paste what we have up here, that might actually be simpler. We can just go ahead and copy paste it out like this. So if it were to go back inside my index page, then instead of referring to get users, I'm gonna to refer to get users STMT. And we do need to insert two parameters. So I'm gonna say we want to get the username Daniel. And I also want to make sure I include the last name, which is Nilsson. And if I were to go ahead and save this, go inside my website, refresh, well, undefined variable row. Let's make sure we fix that error line. Ah, of course, we can't just copy paste up here. We do actually need to refer to a variable name and not just use this first name. So like this, we can actually go back inside our website, refresh, and as you can see, we get Daniel. We could also, if we wanted to just get the date of birth, 
uh, what was that inside our database? Let's just go ahead and double check. That was referred to as date of birth, just like spell out like that. Let's go ahead and include that date of birth. So where to go again inside our website, you can see that we get the date of birth instead. But now there's also another thing that we might want to do inside the website, which is insert information inside our database or update something or create a table or something. So uh, there's a slightly different process there when it comes to doing that. It's much more simple, but it's slightly different. So if I were to copy paste my method here, just, you know, to do it, uh, what I can do is I can change the name of it to set users SCMT. Again, just because we are setting information inside the database, it is a habit to create either uh, get something or set something. Uh, and this is when we have to do something that actually interacts with the actual database that we usually tend to use these sort of uh, names here. So inside of here, I can actually go ahead and just sort of delete all what we have here. I'm going to delete everything except for the SQL statement. I'm just going to go ahead and change that one. And I want to change this one so that it says, instead of selecting, insert into users. Then I want to make sure we include the actual, uh, what do you call it? Column names of the different columns we have inside our table. Uh, I actually have them on the side of my notes here. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste them in. Again, it's just users underscore first name users underscore last name, users underscore date of birth. Uh, if you have your own database with different values, of course you need to use your values. That doesn't make sense to use mine here. Um, so afterwards, we also need to set some values. And these values need to be, uh, you know, again, because we're using prepared statements, need to just be placeholders. So going in here, I'm gonna write question mark, comma, question mark, comma, question mark. And again, the reason we have three different placeholders is because if I were to go inside my database, I have three different columns that I need to fill out. The user's ID is created automatically because it's auto incremented. So we don't need to touch that. So going inside our code again, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go down to the next line. And just like before, I am going to go ahead and prepare the SQL statement. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that like so. And then we just simply need to go ahead and execute. So again, copy paste, and we just need to fill in the information. Now this time we do also need to include not just a last name and a first name, but also a date of birth, because we have three pieces of data. I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure I include that inside my execute. So with this, if I were to go inside my index page and say I, instead of doing this, want to run a set users statement. I need to make sure we include a third parameter. Let's go ahead and call this next guy John Doe, because that's the usual name you pick when you don't know what to choose. Um, we're gonna go ahead and set a date of birth. It's gonna say 1984, and let's just say 0302. Save this one. Now, what is going to happen now is, as you can see, if I refresh my database, we only have three entries in here. We only have three rows. If I were to go inside my website now, refresh it, you can see we don't have any information in here anymore. But if I were to go inside my database and refresh, you can see that now we have John Doe. So now I inserted that information inside my uh, inside my browser here, or inside my database is called. Um, so this is how we can fetch stuff and how to update the database. Again, it is the exact same process. If I were to say I want to update something inside the database or create a table or something, it's the same process here. You create an SQL statement, you connect to the database and prepare the SQL statement, and then you execute it filling in the parameters. Again, this is only needed if you do actually need to get user input, which in some cases you don't need to. So in that case, you don't need to use prepared statements. Um, but this is how we can interact with the database. In the next episode, I'm going to take this exact same information and I'm going to apply the MVC model to it, which is going to be something that a lot of people have requested because they couldn't quite see how the MVC model could be used to gather information like this. So we're going to actually apply that and I'm going to try and explain it as well as I can. So. So with that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.